are going through my super specific book recommendations that I asked you guys over on my Instagram. I love watching these videos. I think they're so much fun and I always get like a book recommendation that I didn't know I needed. So I'm hoping that is the case with today. I have about 10 super specific book recs that I'm going to give to you. Um, I might be making a part two to this because I don't want this video to be super long. If you're interested in being featured in one of these videos, if you want a book rec from me, go over to my Instagram and make sure you're following me there because that is honestly where I'm most active. We are going to just jump right into it. The first one I have is recommend me a book that will make me happy but not romance. This is Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau and this book I just finished last week actually was such a feel-good book for me and I wasn't expecting it to be at all but it was honestly just a book that left me feeling so happy for like no reason. I just felt so good after reading it. So this follows 14 year old Mary Jane. She comes from this very white straight laced strict family her mother isn't very emotional she doesn't show her a whole lot of love and her dad honestly doesn't talk to her so she's just kind of going with the flow that's all she's ever known and then she gets a job nannying for this family in the neighborhood near hers and she realizes very quickly that they're quite literally the opposite of her family. Their family dynamics are so different from hers. Like they talk about everything. They talk about their bodies, their sexualities, how they're feeling. They scream, they sing, they dance, which is stuff that like does not happen at Mary Jane's house ever. So she is completely thrown for a loop, but it's like a slow adjustment. And it's at the perfect time in her life. She's 14 years old. So she's like coming to terms with puberty and like feeling comfortable in her own skin. The father in the house that she nannies for is a psychiatrist and he is taking in a rock star and the rock star's wife for the entire summer so that the rock star can get clean, get sober. So Mary Jane is living in this house with this really loud, fun family and a rock star and his wife. And it is just like completely out of Mary Jane's comfort zone, but it is just so feel good and so happy and like the funniest things happen. They go on like a little beach trip, like it's so fun. And there's a lot of music. If you're a music person, you love like oldies, you're gonna love this book. I finished this and I just like felt so happy inside. Like it just made me feel so good. So if you're looking for a book that will make you happy, but not romance, there's no romance in this book literally at all. Um, this is Mary Jane. I highly, highly recommend this for you. Next one is recommend me a book that makes you want to write. As soon as I read this one, I knew exactly what I wanted to show you guys. I have two actually. So the first one I'm going to show you is The Hunger Games. I feel like everybody's read this at this point, And if you haven't, this is your sign to read it. This is literally one of my all time favorite book series in the entire world. This is a dystopian YA fantasy kind of book. This futuristic America known as Pan Am. So there are 12 districts that make up Pan Am and every single year each district picks a female and a male tribute to compete in The Hunger Games which is a fight to the death. Um, very dark, very creepy, but phenomenal storytelling. Every time I read this book I'm completely thrown into the story. This makes me want to write because I'm so inspired by like the level of storytelling in this book. Just so good. And then the other one that makes me want to write is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. This is a very recent read for me. I finished this series maybe a month ago. The best way I can describe this is like a fantasy fairy tale for adults or for like teens, young adults, stuff like that. So this is like a big game where you have to be specifically invited to attend it. And the winner at the end of the game gets a wish granted and the main characters Donatella and Scarlet Dragna have kind of been wanting to go their whole lives and they finally get invited. They get to the game to realize that Donatella has been kidnapped and the whole point of this year's game is to find Donatella and the winner gets a wish granted. So for everybody else, this is just a game. They want to get a wish granted. They're there because of the attraction of the whole thing. But for Scarlet, her sister is literally missing. So she has much higher stakes in this game um and there are just so many moving parts there's some romance there's world building there's a lot of family dynamics that you learn about and it is just so well written it's like the perfect 
quick paced fairy tale fantasy kind of book and I adore this. It makes me want to write so bad. The storytelling is just phenomenal. Okay, so the next one we have is recommend me a book with found family and a plot twist that will make me want to throw the book across the room. I have two for you. The first one is a little like I feel like I wouldn't think right away it's found family but it is. So this is Gallant by B.E. Schwab. If you are not a V.E. Schwab reader, get on it. Like literally get on it because V.E. Schwab is one of the best storytellers in the world. Like so talented. They are just incredible. So Gallant is about this little girl who is mute and she's an orphan living in this all girls orphanage. She doesn't speak, she doesn't talk to anybody and she's kind of ostracized at the orphanage. She has no family. And all she knows is that there's this home, this family home called Gallant. She has this notebook that her mom left her and her mom says, whatever you do, do not go to Gallant. So she's kind of like, this is the only connection I have to my family. That's all I know. But my mother is like literally telling me word for word, do not go to Gallant. Long story short, she gets a letter delivered to the orphanage inviting her to stay at Gallant. It is signed from her uncle. It's the only family member she's ever heard from, so she has to go. She packs up her things and gets there to discover that nobody who lives in that house sent her the letter, but they take her in regardless. And that's all I want to say, but it's a bit of like a paranormal story. Um, so if you're not like into paranormal, I don't know if you'll love it, but it is such a well-written story and like the twists and turns like at the end you will literally want to throw this book across the room but kind of in a good way kind of in a bad way like it's just so much fun and there's a really good found family trope towards the ending um so yeah i'm going to recommend this one the other one i'm going to recommend for you is going to be six of crows i feel like that is such a typical found family plot but like that's what you think of I feel like when you think of found family but if you haven't read it highly recommend I loved Six of Crows so Six of Crows so Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo follows this very odd eclectic group of people who don't fit in like at all with each other they're all from very different worlds and backgrounds and just very different people but they are all coming together to pull off this heist and it is such a such a beautiful found family trip like you'll cry reading this and you will definitely want to throw the book across the room like i feel like i did multiple times reading six of crows loved six of crows so i highly recommend that one for a found family trip okay the next one that i'm going to recommend is a book that feels like a fall semester for a sad post-grad girl i feel that because i'm in the same boat this one I feel like is so perfect if you're a fantasy person. So this is Legend Born by Tracy Dion and this takes place I believe in the fall semester at a campus in North Carolina. But this is about our main character Brie who is attending an early college program. I believe she's 16 or 17 and she is living at UNC. I really think it's UNC but I'm not definite. Um, not really the point though. So she is attending this school for an early college program and she kind of gets caught up in this secret society that is centered around the legend of King Arthur and the Round Table and it is so well written. It's just so much fun. I had a blast reading this book. A lot of magic in this and there's some love interests and it is just giving the perfect fall semester vibe in my opinion. Um, it's a little more focused on like schooling rather than like the idea of fall but if you're a fantasy person and you're looking for something that takes place like on a college campus in the fall semester perfect book for you next one is recommend me a book that will make me cry i feel like this isn't like a book that you would think of when you think of like like a stereotypically sad book but it's so sad and beautiful and heartbreaking it's just everything it's literally everything this is the invisible life of Addie larue by v.e schwab this is a v.e schwab fan page now i think um so this follows Addie larue who is a girl living in 1700s france i believe it's been a while since i read this but yeah i believe she's living in 1700s france and she is about to get married kind of against her will it's not what she wants she doesn't want to be a wife she doesn't want to be a mom she doesn't want a family and she lives in this very small village she wants to see the world the night before she is about to get married she is in the woods crying 
as one does and um she makes a deal with the devil so she makes a deal with the devil who promises her that she will live forever and she can travel wherever she wants but nobody will remember her name she makes the deal and this book spans about three centuries of Addie LaRue's life and we follow Addie LaRue's life and it is a really heartbreaking life that she lives for the most part because as soon as someone leaves the room and she is out of their sight, they don't remember who she is. So she is constantly falling in love with people and making these deep connections only to have them forget about her as soon as they leave the room. Um, and it's so sad to read that. It's really, really hard, honestly, to like put yourself in that position and imagine that kind of heartbreak and to experience that over and over and over again and she doesn't realize how serious this is that nobody remembers her she can't have a place to live she can't find work it's really really sad and then the plot twist of this which it's not a spoiler it's literally in the description is that she meets this boy kind of present time and he remembers her name after he sees her a second time which has never happened before so that is the invisible life of Addie LaRue if you want to cry pick her up. The next one is recommend me a book that I will want to live in and I have the perfect one for you. This is One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. I just finished this last week and when I tell you I've never felt so strongly about wanting to live in the pages of a book. Um, so this takes place in Positano. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it but it takes place in Italy and this is just the story of a girl named Katie who is supposed to go on this big trip with her mom. They had this trip planned and unfortunately her mom passes away and she decides that she's going to go on this trip by herself and when she gets there she meets the 30 year old version of her mom and spends the trip with her. It is just like unreal like it's just so good. This I expect it to make me cry actually but it really didn't. It was just kind of like beautiful like it was a really beautiful book and the way the author explains the setting and the scenery like the setting as a character in and of itself. The food like the way she explains the dinners that Katie eats. I was drooling reading this like she talks about a lemon ricotta ravioli and I was like <laughs> like I need to make it. She talks about like this tomato salad. Oh my god like it's a sad book like kind of but it's like more so just like stunning like it's stunning like I wanted to live in the pages of this book so if you're looking for a book that's gonna like wrap you up and you're like oh my god I never want to finish this I want to live here this is the one the next one is an enemies to lovers but lighthearted, not super serious and I have the perfect one this is a lady's guide to fortune hunting by Sophie Irwin so this follows our main character Kitty Talbot who is traveling to London for the season <gasps> is my thing gonna die? Sorry, my camera died, but we are back. So anyways, this is following Kitty who's traveling to London for the season to find herself a rich husband to pay off her family's debts. And it is just such a fun read. So she is like trying to coerce these men to marry her. And she is basically telling them big lies that she is not suffering from crippling debt because she needs to marry a rich man. She can't own her own property. She can't work. She needs to marry a rich man. It's 1800s. Um, and we meet, what is his name? We meet Lord Radcliffe who sees right through her. He knows exactly what she's doing and he's kind of trying to like take her down to like end this whole plot that she has and they start off as enemies and obviously as you can tell they become lovers. So it's very lighthearted and like it's like goofy like it's funny. I was literally like giggling and like kicking my feet reading this. I loved it and it's super short. It's like a quick little palette cleanser so I recommend this one. I'm going to save the rest for a part two because there are so many and I feel like I've talked so much so I don't want this video to be like 10 years long. So we are going to end the video there but those are all of my super specific book recs for now. I think I'm going to do part two next week. So if you have more like specific book recs that you would like for me feel free to DM me and I will include that. I promise if I didn't include yours in this video you will be in the next. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you on Sunday.